Christina, from what I understand, you're using virtual assistants um, in the Philippines with Daniel's company, My Outdesk, to do prospecting for you. And it's yeah. very successful. And I would, I would love to hear how that is successful because, you know, for so many people, hiring and training a prospector and someone to make calls, someone to convert the leads, recruit, whatever it is, is so difficult, let alone the concept of hiring someone overseas to do that. That's a different country to be successful at that. I really want to go on this interview today and really find out what you're doing to make this successful. Can you tell us a little bit why you hired a VA and, and, and why you're doing this through Daniel's company? Yeah, absolutely. So we actually were kind of like a traditional team where we struggled finding the person who could do this consistently and with a high success rate. And where are you located? What, what market are you in? We're in Temecula, California. You're, and you're in Temecula. So you struggled trying to find someone to make calls in all of Temecula. Exactly. Okay. And we went through many people. All right. And, you know, they could do it for a short amount of time and then they would stop. And mm -hmm. the results were never it's, it's as a, good. It's a hard job making calls all day. Now what, now, what types of calls did you want them to do? Was it outbound prospecting? Outbound. So, so who are they calling? Expired FISBOs, um, you know, anything that was trying to find us business to, and appointments to go on. So they were calling expireds, FISBOs, maybe making just listed, just sold calls, maybe even calling past clients and centers of influence in your database. And this yes. is an unlicensed VA out in the Philippines that you ended up hiring doing this. Tell me how you made that shift to go that route. Well, thank goodness I stumbled upon Daniel because he and I have been in conversation for a bit and out of that came um, an understanding of what his company could really do. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, you know, I've heard that it was really great and then I've heard people had challenges with it. So because I knew a lot of agents who had a lot of success, I called Daniel, we worked on the process and finding the right person, um, which was a phenomenal process. I really felt in control. My concern originally was that I wasn't gonna be in control of who I got because I had heard from some people that that was a challenge. I was in total control. Yeah. Um, they really walked me through the process, they coached me through the process of how to select and all of that, um, and we found a dynamite girl who is just, she has become very quickly a key member of our team. Now, Daniel, we, we, we use you, my out desk here at Viral, and you know it was great because when you, you provided three candidates who were already pre-screened on real estate and kind of know everything they need to know as a, as a foundation, and I saw their disk assessments, I saw their computer speeds and everything about them. They were really, actually, really quite qualified, and then I made my decision, but I want, before I even go into that, I want to understand how do you manage this person? How many do you have and what are you doing to make sure that they are successful for your prospector? Tell me about that. I want to get right to the point, but that's what people want to know. Right, right. So we have almost 700 people and I say almost 700 because I'm like patiently waiting the report that comes out in two days because I think we're going to break 700. Um, so you have 700 and, customers? No, 700 virtual assistants. On oh. average, uh, most of our cu customers have one or two, so okay. it's like one and a half or so. Um, I think it's 569 clients or something like that. And, 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 and honestly, what you're talking about is like the keys to the real estate kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. If you can figure out how to hire, train, uh, manage, hold accountable, and get somebody at a high level prospecting every single day, you pretty much, I mean, everything else in real estate is an easy thing because the most challenging thing is is getting the leads. Like that's the, so what was that's the just, what was the profile of a prospect that's actually successful for her? So tell me about the profile of this person that you that so, she chose. Christina, I'm going to let you answer that because I think you're going to have an okay. interesting answer. So Christina, tell me about these profiles. So you got the profile. You have to make a decision of who you're going to risk the money on and the time to make these right. calls in your area on behalf of your company and your brand. You looked at yes. the profile. How did you make the decision? What what what? What did it? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it was um, interesting because what was most important was I needed to know what I needed. And what I recognized in the process, if I wasn't crystal clear on how I was going to have them work, then that would have been a confusion process. But with Daniel's guidance, I was able to say, listen, I want FISBOs expired, just listed, just sold. I want a dialer, which means I need someone articulate. I need someone smart. And then I would love someone to get me more data, meaning... I get Zillow leads all the time, I get an email, I want a phone number, I want a Facebook page, I want something to follow up. 
So through our coach, she actually helped me interview the right people, and then out of that, it was an immediate click with the right woman. Okay, so let's. Um, so, I, so you got the right person. We, yeah. we we know that. So when they start, essentially, you gave them what a mojo dialer. We did a mojo dialer. We have Fred which dials X, like which dials like three, you load up numbers. It dials three lines at once. Right. right, and we put him through, we, we got a local Skype number, okay. again, we set that all up for her. Mm -hmm. We told her what we wanted her to learn. So we work off Top Producer, so we wanted her to learn all of Top Producer. We wanted her to learn all, all of the expired FISBO scripts that Just Listed just so that she could get her hands on. We inundated her with data that we generally use as a team mm -hmm. so that she knew our culture and how to speak as if she was right next to me versus just knowing that from the other side. And so my Outdesk had a great resource for her to go and learn things that we pointed her to, which was phenomenal. Okay, so let's just get some numbers here. She averages 40 attempts a day in her four hours. Okay. And then she's booking on average now two to three what we call hot lead appointments, meaning you know they've agreed to communicate with us a, via a different venue, live sometimes, sometimes just via the phone. So it's not an appointment, it's just here's someone who's really interested. I filtered through all the raw, and I, I found these interested the ones, and they passed the interested leads over to you for right. you to follow up with. And that's our job. You know, our job is to then cultivate, qualify, and determine whether we want to go out on that appointment. And I'm sure with more training, we'll get her to that point, but we felt in the beginning we wanted to control that aspect, but we wanted her to bring in more people Every okay, day. which is which is good because again they're making the 40 outbound attempts, and yeah. all they're doing is they're running a very simple script which we'll get into, and if they just basically have the need and the motivation, they say great, I'll pass your name along to the licensed agent to talk to you, right? Correct. So they're not like setting appointments or anything like that. They're just passing one name. We set formal appointments because we don't want to go on unqualified appointments, Got and it. we know the market she doesn't. Got it. Okay, so tell me about the the whole what they're saying to avoid like what the license versus light unlicensed what you can say by hiring a prospector. What's their script? What do you um, have we actually roughly? have formal scripts that we give them. Mm -hmm. So she's she's really trained off that. It's really to uncover a are they motivated to sell? B where are they in the process? C are they interested in working with agents who have buyers? And or will they be listing their property in the future? So, sounds pretty simple. Let's let's role play, <laughs> just so people can hear it of what you're, okay. what this what this girl is saying to an expired. All right, I'm an expired. Well, here's the best part. She sends us her audios, so we get to hear her how conversation. Is she, how is she's how is she recording those? Through her Skype uh, phone number. The free Skype recorder. Great. Right. So not only do we get when she sends us the, the lead, daily, do the we daily get all record. the daily report? We get a, a recording that we can actually listen to, which helps me train with her, right? Because if I hear her say something that might not be what I want, I can go back in with her and train her as we do a Skype meeting every week to work on her skills to enhance her conversion. How long did it take her from the moment you hired her to start producing leads? How long was that onboarding time? The first week I worked very closely with her on coaching her on language. The second week she set appointments. That's great. That's great. She's so, been doing it ever since. So the scripts, can you tell me what, what scripts you're using and where you got the scripts? What are they? There's basically um, we printed use a off combination. Scripts. We use a combination of Tom Ferry scripts because I'm a Tom Ferry coach. And then we also use um, some great scripts that we've gotten from Keller Williams. And then we also, Daniel at my out desk had a set of scripts that he provided. So we merged them into the ones we like the best that speak most like us. Do you find that expired calls or FISBO calls or just listed, just sold calls provide more leads? Or which, which, well, which, well, I get, obviously, yes, but like, which, uh, where's most of our calls coming from? Are there that many expires well, in Temecula, or is it, most, is it mostly all just listed, just sold calls she's making? And that is a great question, because that really has to do with market conditions. So for most of us right now, we're feeling the shift a little bit, that we were getting more expired the earlier in the year. Now we're seeing more FISBOs pick up, because the market's good. And then that will shift again. So the cool thing is keeping her on the pulse and making her, you know, really good at all of them. Knowing that one week she might have more expires, one week she might have more fizzbugs. That's great. Okay. 
So in a given week, how many leads is she bringing into your team that are really qualified sellers? Is that right? Sellers and buyers or mostly sellers? Sellers and buyers. So again, she also does a database review for us and getting additional information. So on average, she brings in anywhere from 15 to 20 new leads through her phone dials. And then on top of that, she's getting us about 20 to 25 either emails or by doing the by addition, so people. by making cold outbound calls, you're getting 20 leads a week. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Daniel, I don't understand. Why don't more people do this? You, you know, most people are just afraid, and I, I actually am talking to a guy. He spends nine thousand dollars a month on mailers to like fifteen thousand people that are in his farm, right? And every month he gets about 50 leads from that $9,000. And I said, dude, hire five of our guys, pay us three or four grand, and we'll get you 200 leads. And do it, following exactly what Christina is saying, she's basically highlighting people who have motivation and are in somewhere in that sales process. And so with that information, she can then act how, accordingly. If somebody's like, I'm ready to sell in the next 30 days, and you know, I'm right now doing repairs. Mm -hmm. Well, that's obviously a hot lead. If somebody says, I'm thinking in the next three months, Christina can then take that, put it into a top producer, and then make an so initial she's, call. she's and making then... all of her calls through top producer then? She well, logs everything in top producer. But Every... is she, she, using, is she, is she using Mojo? She uses Mojo to dial, and she uses Skype for the phone number, and then all data goes into top producer. Got it. Because w one of the things we've had a lot of success with with my out desk is – uh, sending him all the uh, archive buyer leads too, and just mojoing all those to try to find some gold, right? Well, and we're going. We just took a 1.2 million dollar listing, which for Temecula that's high, yeah. because of uh, one of my failures of an expired from a, a live body who couldn't get the the information. Our VA skip traced her, got her information. We were able to get a phone number, called her went on the appointment and got the appointment. So had our VA not been going through our database and updating data, we would have never been on that appointment. Wonderful. So I've got a question. How, how, uh, $1.2 million, how many months of your VA's invoice is that going to be? Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. like a few years, that's Daniel. Years. <laughs> so, okay, more, more questions. I want, I want to really get, get – so how long have you been doing this? with her um i think we're on going entering our third month with her third month and consistent leads every week to actually convert to appointments and then every sales week. every every week 180 dollars a week yep seems like a great investment now hang on why don't we scale this up why not hire five well, of them? we are we are scaling it up um we have her going to a training in two weeks to get some additional things again what's important in my opinion frank is that the agent and the team scale according to what they can scale they can and not just get overzealous and make it a failure. Got it. Right? So we have some needs on our social media side she's going to plug in. Then we have another need. We'll do more of these leads. But we're shoring up some things to support what she's I would, doing. I would love to maybe hear one or two of the calls or maybe even publish them with this video and I'll edit out the other person for privacy just to yeah. hear her questions and what she says so people yeah. can hear the dialect and kind of the conversation. I'm fine with that, Daniel. Is there an issue with that? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, obviously it's working, but here, let's just step back. Because someone that's watching this is like, are you kidding me? A hundred eight hours a week and I get all these leads and someone to make right. all these calls for me? And yeah. someone that, you know, act, this actually works, you know, because you hear so many st horror stories of things failing and not working. And, like, this is not inbound leads. This is not inbound buyer leads. This is not, like, mm. maybe, you know, it's nice soft past clients centers of influence. This is outbound cold calling. Right. Right. Have you had any suggest? Have you had any um, success with maybe her calling past clients or Sphere looking for referrals? We haven't put her on that yet because we really want to shore up this system yeah. to be constantly generating lots of money. Um, again, one of the things I worked with and I talked to Daniel about and is important: the team leader has to be very involved in the training of the VA and putting them in the right direction. I think some of the issues are an agent will hire a VA and think that they can do everything and they can direct. So, let's, so can we go a little bit deeper on that then? So yeah. someone's watching this and going, okay, I should probably give this a shot. And they may not have as much experience, you know, maybe leading and managing people as you. Mm -hmm. So when they onboard them, what tips would you give them? I have regular Skype meetings with them. How often? What's regular mean? We do it twice a week. Okay. So 
We do it on uh, the end of her shift, which is a Monday, at the beginning of her shift, which is Friday. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to provide them the scripts and role play and respond to them. So she sends me an email when she starts. Here's what I'm trying to accomplish today. And then she sends me an email at the end of the day. Here's what I accomplished. And all throughout her shift, she's sending me the leads in between. And if I don't respond to that or I don't acknowledge or I don't, you know, help her build, then what is her desire to keep growing? How, how fast do you respond to the lead that she sends in? So I'm assuming she's ending the conversation Ooh. like, so I'm going to give your name to a great licensed agent here that can take this conversation further or something like that. Yeah. Right? So by the time you get the lead, how long until you make the call to follow up to qualify? Me or my team member are following up on whatever she and my, and the a, uh, client discuss. So if it was, we want to send you this great video about for sale by owner, and by the way, we're going to check with our buyer, then we'll send them the video, we're checking with our buyer, and then we'll get back to them that night. But yeah, we are responsive the minute it's happening, depending on what, what they end that conversation on. Christina, this seems, this seems too simple. I know. Why? I know. This seems too simple. <laughs> this is what I told Daniel. How come the whole world isn't doing this? I didn't get it, but now that I do understand it, but to the point of too many agents take this on too lightly without a responsibility on their yeah, end, to, and it won't to, work. Lead, to lead them and manage them and train them to do well. So I would but, love to hear the conversations. If I can get some of those recordings, I would love to publish that with this video so people can listen. I'll edit out the other party for privacy. Yeah. Um, and as far as for the scripts... You know, you recommend the Tom Ferry scripts. Where could someone get those? Online. You can go online. If you're in Tom Ferry coaching, you get it from your coach. Mm -hmm. Daniel at my out desk has amazing scripts. Whatever organization you hang your license at, they is have she, scripts. Is she, is she sticking right to the script? <laughs> no, no, no. I, no, no, I mean, no, 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 no. Hang on, no, no, no. Is your VA sticking right to the script? Oh, okay. You know what? What's wonderful about the VA is she sticks to the scripts. But she's not afraid to probe deeper. Okay. You know, she's really got a handle on... Did she have experience uh, making calls beforehand? What was her background? No. No experience I, making calls. Funny thing. Everybody said, you have to hire someone who has experience. And I hired the one who didn't because I wanted her to be a reflection of me, not of the five other people she worked with. What's her disc profile? She is a SCI. No D. A little bit of D. A little bit of D, but the S and so the, the C are... S and the C, an S and a C really is making tough. outbound calls to sellers? And she loves it. Why does this fly in the face of everything I've heard of? You know, you know it's it's crazy, because, Frank, I, I'm and I'm, I'm going to, real quick, I'm doing this, like, disc assessment on three different personality profile types, because I have people like Christina and then another client uh, across the, the country in Florida who swears you have to have a high D. And she's like, well, she's an SC and she's doing great. And so when you compare the results, it's similar results. And so I, I think people get too hung up on disc profile for for this particular position. I think it's important, like, what's their motivation? Mm -hmm. What's my disc profile? What's their disc profile in converse? Like, how are we going to work together? Like, how systematic is it? How, how good is my training? Dino, do they, here's, uh, what, here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a separate company and I'm going to train these people. All right, so I'm going to train five of them to generate leads and I'll sell them off. Yeah, perfect. That sounds like a great plan. That's my idea. And, I, and I'll, do it all, I'll do it all in the Temecula market. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Only to me, though. Only you know what? I talked to, I, and there's another guy, and I don't like to name names, so I won't, but he charged $5,000 to set 20 appointments or 10 or 15 appointments. And... Um, he sells 20 or 30 of those a week. And, and I just don't, first of all, well, I, I think, don't I think, think, well, I think the big difference is that he, he, setting the appointment versus just passing the lead on and then that person calls back to qualify it. That's, that's yeah. two fundamental differences. But I know, I know what you're saying is that for 180 bucks a week, it's just some of that strong, just finding them, finding the people that have the need. Well, yeah. the reality is if you don't have a team that can convert warm leads, you have right. a whole different problem, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, and so, so you're a good agent VA, calling that person. Right. Your VA should be bringing leads in mm -hmm. and helping you build a robust, a robust pipeline that your team then converts consistently and structured and makes it happen. That's great. Okay. Is there anything else we should talk about with this? Because I'm going to share this video because this is something that needs to be 
duplicatable. So is this I'm going to give you... Is, Daniel, let me ask you this. Is this something that's just... This is not just a one-off anomaly. This is no. something that actually is consistently proven to actually work with other people, right? Yeah, I actually didn't think it would work. When we first started doing this in like 2010 or... Yeah, 2010 and 11, we first started it. Mm -hmm. I had a couple clients who were courageous, and they just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it happen. And they did, and I helped, and then we started getting traction. And now... Probably a third of our people, so a couple hundred, are are responsible for you know phone calls um, to. Is Jeff Cohn in Omaha a client of my outlet desk? Uh huh. I believe he is. I think they're making like up to six hundred calls, I believe, or something like that every day, getting yeah. lots of leads and very successful program and very easy to scale up because you don't have the payroll tax, you don't have to buy computers, you don't have to buy office space, you don't have any of those yeah. expenses, which is One of the which is great, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, one of the best, um, one of our best clients, and I'm just fundamentally amazed by this. She has two VAs, and between the two VAs, they set 85 appointments in the month of April. That's great. So 85 total for the entire month, and she's t telling me that her team's knocked down a good percentage of that. We're still waiting to see how many end up converting into actual clients, but mm -hmm. those are phenomenal numbers, man. Any agent who says, I don't want 85 new buyers in addition to the other, or sellers in addition to the others that I already have, those guys are crazy. Christina, do you think it's important how, so it's 40, it's 40 attempts, how many contacts? She generally gets about six to eight contacts live, and then of that, she's sending over probably at least four every session. And they're qualified. She, we hear their whole conversation. She's gone through the script. You know, are they qualified in that they're going to sign a contract today? No. Are they qualified to be a the good pipeline, lead? Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. So, um, um, you give them call. everything to be successful. Yep. You make sure that you're giving them the things and the tools to be successful and that you're holding them accountable, you know, really paying attention to rewarding their wins. You know, they are so excited to book those appointments for you. That is what their goal is in their career. So if I'm not acknowledging it, paying attention, telling her that, then I risk a very big disconnect from us not really seeing each other but once a week on a Skype call. Daniel, how does someone get, a, get in touch with you to, to do this? So we're going to actually, on this video at the bottom, we're going to post a link where you can get our 90-day launch. So every new client that comes on and hires a seller or a prospector, a uh, virtual assistant, has a 90-day like training manual that we like to give out. And you can input videos, and we already have it pre-filled out with what we think is important. But like Christina uses um, Top Producer, and somebody else might use a different CRM. So whatever you use, you input that in. We're going to give you free scripts. We're going to give you a link, so if you want to get more information. Every single client that comes through the door is... Um, actually has a consultation. Christina says she and I work together, um, but we have three other licensed realtors who have done hundreds of these who just have conversations and they set, you know, a job description that help you with your 90-day training program, basically. They'll get make sure your phone system's up and working and, and going right. And so, like, that's, that's going to be the way to kind of move forward. You said success. I'd say 75% of the people who are successful who aren't just lucky, the other 25% just are lucky because they hired a great person. But the other people, the 75%, they're just they're great with training and making them feel like they're part of the team. I mean, that's the big thing. They're, they're, Filipinos are so loyal when you hire them and bring them in and you know and and make them part of your team. They'll they'll die and live for you. I mean, I get pictures of their kids saying happy birthday. Big Boss Daniel from their kids, you know, and like, thank you. We went on vacation. They're they're sitting in front of, you know, because of my outdesk. Yeah. The other day we were tagged on Facebook because one of our newer virtual assistants just got her health card. So we give our virtual assistants um, health, for, I mean, health care for their family, which is unheard of in an online kind of world, right? Yeah. So th we're, we're going to post all this on this video for Great. you. Well, Daniel, thanks a lot for uh, for letting us know about the success of this. And Christina, thank you for sharing your uh, your tips. I think this is going to excite a lot of people about the opportunity of hiring a prospector overseas to make cold outbound seller prospecting calls. Yeah, it's exciting.